Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Ingram Jones, and thanks for tuning in to listen to this interview. I'm with Fast Eddie Chambers after his uh, comeback to the boxing ring. Eddie, mm -hmm. how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, it was a good fight last night. Uh, just what I needed to get back into the, you know, back in the business. Okay, um, let's go back a, a touch. It's good to see you on Periscope. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Best. <laughs> well, I'll get some of that popping off in a little while, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was, on, it was, on, it was, uh, it was good. I actually like, I actually like that a bit. You know, I'm not a big, I'm not, that, well, I guess I can't say I'm not a big social media guy, but I think, because I guess I am. But Periscope is actually a breath of fresh air a lot. Of, I, I enjoy doing it. The, um, you kind of, the fact that you can kind of, you know, interact with the fans while you're, you know, while you're, uh, you know, doing your work, and like, you know, get my hands wrapped and things like that, shadow box, and they can kind of see what you're doing and, you know, ask your questions. It's, it's, it's a fun little little thing. that I like it. I enjoy it. It is, and indeed, and people get to know a little bit more about who you really are. Right, right, and, 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 and I act actually as things are happening, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of unpredictable things that can happen, you know, when you're being, you know, looked at, like, you know, different jokes and, you know, different people coming in. You never know. Like all, all kind of stuff can happen. It makes it, it makes it interesting. It makes it more fun. Absolutely. That's why you got to be a little careful of your surroundings when you have Periscope on, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us more yeah. about your coach. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. In this, this coach. What's your coach's name? His name is uh, Anthony. Anthony Rodriguez. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say his whole. His actually, his, his, his name's actually Freddie Anthony Rodriguez. Okay. But I don't think he likes his first name much. <laughs> okay. Well. Um... Yeah. But um, but no, he's he's uh, actually extremely talented coach. I am, he understands body. He's he's to fight, obviously, and um, he has a different way of looking. He has kind of like my view of boxing. Actually, uh, like if you did, Peter Fury as well as another one who he thinks outside of the box, looks at things slightly differently. Looks at it. Uh, it's like you know looking at a, an art, uh, some art. You know what I mean? And everybody seeing what it is basically as it appears to be in front of you. And, but he sees it maybe slightly different. It looks a little more, in, 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 he sees it in, in a little bit better detail. You know what I mean? Those are, he's a, he's a teacher, this kid, this guy. He, he, but he's young in the game. He's not really, you know, uh, I don't know, I guess, he, he's probably not going to be respected uh, right away because he doesn't he hasn't have a huge resume of being a head trainer for, you know, a lot of these other uh, big-time fighters. But believe me, his knowledge is just as great, it's just as good as, just about anybody I can I, I can think of. Obviously, he has to get the experience, but he, he, he's also a student of the game, and he's willing to learn, and he's also willing to work with the fighters with experience like myself and listen to what I have to say. So that makes for a better corner, more relaxed environment. It, the whole situation is just it's just an awesome thing. To, it's, also, it's awesome to be able to work with somebody like that. The best trainers I've worked with, which have been James Bessier, uh, Peter Fury, obviously my dad, and, and they're, they, they were all good trainers, but... The one thing that those guys obviously had in common is that we can actually kind of talk. Well, my dad, not so much. But with Peter and, and Bashir, we were able to kind of talk and come up with things together. And Anthony possesses that. So he's not too dominating. He doesn't, you know, I don't want to hear what you got to say. I'm the trainer. You want to listen? No. He listens at the same time. You know what I mean? As 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 gives the as, as gives me direction. So it's a it's a like I said it's it's a welcome situation. I'm enjoying myself, and you know, make me it makes me interested in going further with my career. Right. Well, I, I first of all, in terms of Coach Anthony, which which I'm sure that's what he'd like to be referred to as, Coach Anthony mm -hmm. made a statement, and he said that it's the first time he's been actually been given the opportunity to be head coach. And, right. Uh, that's right. A, that's a. That's a big, big statement to make, um, you know. So you've given him his big break, as they say. Yeah, well, well, somebody like him deserves a break. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know, like I said, he, he he's the kind of guy. He's a very good guy, and he loves the game. I mean, he sleeps and drinks it. You know, what I mean, it's just every every bit of 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 every time we talk. You know, what I mean? he's talking about. It. It's always on his mind. Though he's, he's extremely hungry, and I'm hungry, you know what I mean. So yeah. it's a good it's a good situation, you know what I mean. Them being an opportunity, having an opportunity to be my trainer for any fight, any number of fights, is just going to give him the opportunity to, you know, get the experience of being on that level, 
not being so worried about what's going to happen, believing in your work, and then, and then moving forward. Because believe it or not, he's, he, we've had, we've had some, some experience, and it's not just pad work. A lot of people because he's a legendary mint man from the area and actually probably one of the better ones in, in, in boxing. But it's not just about that. He actually has boxing knowledge, and, 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 he, and he understands it. Uh, like I said, a little bit more than people will give him credit for, especially with him being a new guy. But, uh, you know, for him to get this opportunity is something he deserves. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong, you know, James Bashir, who is my guy. You know what I mean? Love James. But, yeah, I love uh, uh, James Bashir. That's, that's my man. And, obviously, we want to make sure that he can come and work with us because I want I want a dream team, to, so to speak. And then I got Peter giving me advice you know, from overseas, and there's going to be obviously a time where I'm able to go over and work with them. But I want, I want this, big, this kind of this, this group of people around me with the experience and the understanding of boxing, and people who think outside of the box and they want to try different things, and, 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 and be innovative, and not just follow the same old crap that is uh, trying to put us in a in a bad way in some ways with boxing. So um, I'm I'm enjoying this, and I, like I said, I just I just I just can't wait to get back in. And, Getting going again. Great. Well, now, with everything that's new, there's questions. You, I could pull it apart one way or the other. First of all, I mean, how did you get to meet with Anthony in the first place? Well, no, I mean, it's funny because uh, I was actually getting ready for my first cruiserweight fight that I was having at, at the time. And, uh, you know, I was in the middle of uh, uh, my press, it was a press day, you know, and he came over because he had a new gym. Talk a little briefly. Hey, I got a new gym over. You know, it's right in Jersey, and I'm like, oh, I live in Jersey. And you know what? Why don't you come on, that, come on down, and you know, and, and see what it's about. You know, and so you know, probably I don't know if I did right away. Probably not for that camp, but sometime after, when I was thinking about just that, ah, you know, I mean, forget accent boxing totally because of the way things went with that fight, and it just wasn't looking good. Um, I went to his gym a few times. Oh, it's a nice place. You know, it's MMA. You know, they have MMA also. In there, it's a big, nice, big place, a lot of space, and uh, it's, like, it's a pretty good place, you know what I mean? Uh, but that's how I started with you know what, let's just get on the pads a little bit, see if you like what I do on the pads. So I, was like, so I started going pads with him. I'm like, oh man, he's pretty damn good with these pads, you know what I mean? And, and, and the workout he had me uh, that, that uh, I did with the pads was like, it was, it was, got me a little winded there. I thought, oh, okay, so, and it was, so it was fun. But I had no idea that uh, he had knowledge, he had a box, and I didn't. I didn't know that he was really, you know, that much of a student that really, really paid attention like that until I thought I'd sit down and just talk with him about boxing a little bit and, and you know, bounce things off me, bounce things off me. I was like, wow. So over time, you know, build a relationship, good friendship or whatever, and then we decided to, uh, you know, continue maybe working out. I was like, you know what, i got to put you on a, on a team, you know what I mean, at least with the miss, you know what I mean, right now. And, you know, then whatever happens, happens. And, you know, working with him, even then for this camp, I, I worked with him some. And obviously, obviously early on, and I would say, well, look, it's going to be a part of the camp anyway. I don't think that year's going to be able to be here for this particular fight. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, you step up. You you can handle it. I ain't, I ain't worried about, you know what I mean? What we've talked about, I know you know your, your, your stuff. I don't want to say the other word. Uh, in boxing, um, you know I mean? I'm fully confident that we can get the job done with you uh, at the helm. So, Let's uh, let's go with it like that, and you know that's the rest is history. <laughs> so far, that's how it's been. Okay, so that, that's fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. The other question would be: at the moment, with the opponent you fought last night, which you would call admit yourself was no more than just yeah. a, 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 a keeping busy fight. Yeah, um, of that, that that's being polite to the opponent you fought last night. But right. I mean, you know where you want to be. Right. Does the trainer that you have now in Anthony able to take you to the next level where it's not about experiment, it's about having a, a set game plan for the top 10 heavyweights in the world where yes. error in training and game plan uh, will cost you and really you can't afford any sort of mishaps now getting back into the top 10. Are you right. confident that, 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 that Coach Anthony can be part of that uh, mission to become a heavyweight champion of the world? Without a doubt. Okay. But I, I honestly believe that with the knowledge he has, it's not, it's not a, I know I would say without a doubt, I, I have uh, complete confidence in what he can do, uh, the game plan he can come up with. 
those things were, uh, you know, what the fight that I had this time, obviously, is a journeyman guy and just kind of guys stay busy, like I said, and that's being generous. But the things I did in there were things that we worked on. And obviously, like you said, it's just like we, like we discussed already, it's a stay busy fight, so things are going to be a bit easier. But this guy wasn't just standing in front of me and making it easy on me to hit him. He's a bit crafty. He's the kind of guy who he has about he has 82 fights, you know what I mean, regardless of how many he lost, he's had 82. So he's been in there. He's learning how to survive. He's, you know, he's, he's one of those guys who, who can't get knocked out right away because he's got to be able to, you know, feed his family off of these fights. You know, these both fights that I have more than one in a month sometimes. So, you know, he's not in there to be hit. But what we worked on, the things that we practiced are why I was able to hit him at will. You know what I mean? Even the guys that have uh, fought a new were, you know, fairly good fighters or top fighters. You know, even my man Chaz, who had fought him, and actually I sparred with Chaz for this, for this fight, had told me, you know, his head's a little bit difficult to find at times. But you hit him to the body, you know what I mean? You pretty much get, you know, you pretty much get what you need out of him. But I was able to hit him in the head. I had no problem landing the shots. These things that we worked on, the stuff that he came up with that we talked about, the things that we bounced off each other and said, let's try this, let's try that. That's how fights are won. That's how, that's how, that's how plans are made for world, type, world, world championship fights. So I feel like you know, his boxing mind is definitely as good as, as, as it needs to be for that level. There's no question about it in my mind. You know what I mean? Guys like you look at Bashir and, and, of course, Peter, and, and to be honest, with, look, look at Peter. A lot of people always had these questions about him early on. Oh, what does he know? What is he going to do? How can he be at the, at the top level? And look at him. Has he even lost a fight yet? I don't think so. As a trainer, I don't think he's lost a fight. And if he is, maybe one. So, you know, I mean, it's all about your mind and what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And how, and how, and how, you, how you plan. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, Anthony as well as Peter and, and Bashir, these guys are successful for a reason. You know what I mean? Somewhat under the radar, but they still get the job done. And, and I think this is, uh, this is Ant's chance, just like it would be Bashir's chance when he's able to get with us, and to really do something positive and do it with somebody like myself who is somewhat of an underdog and people don't expect to really get there. Well, for me, if you've given him the thumbs up, then for me, he's a top coach. You've talked about yeah. Bashir, you've talked about Peter Fury, who was on the show last week and gave you right. all the credit in the world. And Peter said on the show that he hopes that you win the fight or else he'll come and beat you up. Um, <laughs> and I believe it done. too. Yeah, I you, believe it. That's why I got him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the job done and uh, that's very good. And uh, I definitely want to talk to Coach Anthony, get a look to know a little bit more about him because, um, okay. you know... It, it, Fight fans are very quick to, to jump on things like, who's that trainer? And there was it was interesting because I kind of read between the lines. Coach Anthony turned around and said, at, on the periscope before he went out to fight, he said, oh, um, I'm doing the raps. Yep, I do the raps as well. I don't just do pads. I can do raps yeah. as well. So that, to yeah. me, to me <laughs> said to me, ah, he's been getting a bit of stick because people just think he's a pads man. So yeah. that that's really good, and I'm glad that's happened. And um, yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really happy. It's always good to hear that somebody who's virtually unknown um, to to the to the bigger realm of boxing, to, to his own community, is probably very well known. But now it's good. It's always good to give somebody an opportunity to to shine, and um, yeah. that's great. Listen, listen man, it, at the end of the day, you know, boxing, you know what I mean, just like any other sport, is about. If you're a coach, if you're a trainer, you have to be able to direct your fighter, give them the right information. If you can't give them the information, if you can't get a guy any information in the corner and you can't tell him or come up with a plan and can't, you know what I mean, then, you know, what are you good for? But guys like this, you know what I mean, they don't just have the, you know, well, I trained so-and-so who was an extreme talent, and all of a sudden, of course, no matter what, they're going to win championships just because of their talent level and the fact that their presence are you know in the ring don't get me wrong it's like not everybody is going to be a floyd have, have floyd mayweather kind of talent you know what i mean or even the way he thinks or in the, his mind in the ring now i'm not saying roger and, 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 and uh floyd or, or jeff those guys are great trainers just because they've had success with other guys as well as their as, as their uh son and nephew but um not everybody's going to have that so you have to be a good trainer, a good coach, a good teacher. 
you know what I mean, and, and give these guys proper information in the corner. You know, and, and, and I believe that he can give me the, as good of information as anyone. You know what I'm saying? Because he thinks the game, he pays attention to it. He's the kind of guy who can come up with a proper plan to put you in a position to win a big fight. Simple as that. It's just, are you willing to accept it? I don't care how good a trainer you are. If you have a fighter who's not willing to listen or accept what you're trying to tell him, then what, are you, then what is going to happen? There's no, there's no chance that it's going to work. But the information is there. And I'm the kind of guy, if I see somebody like him that knows what he's talking about and deserves the opportunity, deserves the break, I'm going to give it to him. Finally, you came in the ring reportedly at 230 pounds. Yeah, is exact that, guy. Is that, <laughs> is that something that you're going to be at all the time now, or is that because of the opponent you had? or is that No. Where was where, no, your weight with that? It was, and I, it, I've, I've worked, I've, I've been in, in the gym all the time, always in the gym. Yeah. Um, I was actually shocked when I found out how heavy I was. I couldn't tell I was that heavy. I just didn't, I didn't feel that heavy. I still felt the same. It's, and I think a lot of it has to do from the muscle memory and things that I've had when I was working with Peter. Right. You know, because, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I was there, I was around that weight all the time. You know, obviously when fights came out, maybe 23, 220, maybe even 219 at times. But for some reason, it stuck this time. Even when I turned up the training, it was doing two a day, two a day, three a day, things like that. It still stuck. And and I and look, I do I do a certain amount of push-ups, I do a certain amount of abs, a certain amount of uh, uh, things like that every single day. You know, body weight things every day. So you know, it's like I, I just couldn't understand how this is possible. I'm always sweating. I'm always working, but the weight stayed. But it didn't feel like it didn't feel like I couldn't control it if you know what I mean. So, I mean, I, it felt good. Now, obviously, I want to come down a little bit because only because of the number, and I'm not used to being that big, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to probably come down a little bit just to be a little more elusive, but I still want to have that heavy hand, that heavy hand, you know, power that I seem to, to carry in this fight because, believe it or not, uh, when I hit this guy on the chin, I could see, you know, the effect of the weight and the explosive power that I've built. A lot of that has to do. Uh, a lot of that credit goes to Peter because, believe me, that's where I got it from. And to be able to put those extra, that extra in the punch, the venom in the punch, as he says, to to uh, you know end these fights and not just you know throw out, go out there and just throw punches to win rounds, but go out there to, to go out there to make these guys feel it and end these fights early. Excellent stuff there, Eddie Chambers. Thank you so much for talking to Baylor TV, and we look forward to having you back on the show. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm, I'm back. Anytime you call, you know, I'll be 90, 99.8% available. So just let me know. We look forward to having you and hearing your views uh, this weekend, this week. Okay. All right, man. Appreciate it. Take care, Eddie. All right.